I'm Bood and welcome to episode 2 of Building Union Berlin. As always, thanks for joining me, it's massively appreciated. Make sure you do all the good stuff if you want to support me and my channel and this video and the series. I love you long time. If you are brand new though, feel free to subscribe, make sure you all hit that bell. Because we're going to get stuck in to another season with the mighty Union Berlin. And I swear to God, I've loved me, I've loved it. It's been a bit... It's been hard. But they're good at like, times. I've had moments of joy and moments of absolute despair. The transfer window in the summer was the longest one I've had in a long time. It just took a long time. There's a lot of business happening, especially ins and outs, and especially approaching deadline day. Honestly, but we're here. And I was hoping that this squad was better and we could improve on last season and start to see the foundations of a team that could win summer one day. Now, I've added a block so don't spoil some of the names that have come in. We'll come back to the screen in a bit um, to show you, but you'll know at the end of the last episode in around 20 million, a little bit more. More money obviously comes in. Um, and I managed to bring in 18.25 million in player sales and I pretty much spent it all. And I swear to God, it even went down to the point where we had a ton of money in the bank, but I'd run out of transfer budget. I'd maxed out on the wages, but I really needed a winger. We had like five days left till the deadline. I had too many central midfielders. I was trying to sell one, right? <laughs> no one wanted him. Um, I loaned him out or offered him out for loan. Quite a few clubs came in for him. And I'm, honestly, it went down to the death. Managed to get rid of this guy out on loan, getting his wages paid. Found a winger that I really, really wanted. Um, but then he took it all the way to the last day to f accept it. And it was like squeaky bum time. But when it happened, man, the joy I got, because I just felt like, yeah, I've done it. I've, I've actually pulled this off. So these are the finances right now on the 2nd of September. And yeah, I've got a little bit of transfer budget, but obviously not enough to buy the winger I wanted. That's why I've had to tap into the loans. I've got a couple of good loans. Uh, but you can see the wages there pushed it to the limit, really. Um, but we've got 42 million in the bank. We did have more. <laughs> we did have more. But they've upgraded the youth recruitment, which I don't think costs any money. But we're also, at this minute, just starting to improve the youth facilities and the training facilities. Come on. So let's go through this squad, my new squad, as quick as we can, starting with Stefan Ortega. He's going to be my new goalkeeper. We've signed him for Manchester City. Transfer listed, going for 6.5 million flat fee. My backup goalkeeper has good potential. He's six foot four. He's called... St <laughs> He's called... Svetoslav Vutasov. Vutasov? My God, these names, I love them. Um, he's Bulgarian, freebie. I just think he's got good enough potential to be a nice young backup. But right back, we've still got Josip, who is a cracking player, the 28-year-old Croatian. He used to play for Celtic, so I mentioned in the comments he was a great player, and I think he looks great right now. He's been good for me, and he will still be my number one right back. Backup right back is this chap. He's 25 years old. Now, he's all right. He's the kind of player I want to move on eventually, and I do, actually. Um, he doesn't play, he moans. Um, we end up having to tap into that loan market in January because um, I don't want to spend too much money to get a backup for him. At left back, and my backup left back, it's Jerome, who's 30 years old. And again, longer this goes on, this is the kind of player you want to start replacing, or I do. Um, but I've got a new left back who I think has got great ability, and great experience, and it costs me nothing. I think you all know who this chap is, eh? He is a good player. I know he's 30, he's got a good age. He's not too old. He's not young. Bags of experience. Played for Marseille and Arsenal. Three. And he had like seven clubs wanting him. Decent clubs as well. 
and he chose us. Made me feel very proud. The centre half, we've still got Robin, uh, who I think is great. Good solid German player, isn't he? Uh, I like him a lot. And of course, we've got Jan Paul van Hecke, right? Who obviously was on loan last year. You will know if you watched the last episode. We've signed him on a free. Bargain, good squad player. Um, but I've got two new centre halves, two players that I think are good and that will be competing with Robin. And I've never heard of him, I've never had him. And that always excites me on this game when you find something new. The first one is Mavro. I've shot his name because he, honestly, his first name and his last name take up the entire screen. It's actually that long it goes off the screen. It's insane. Um, just makes it easier for me. Uh, he's 25, he's Greek. He's gonna cost 8.75 million eventually. We've got him from Stuttgart. Um, I just think he looks good. Six foot four, big centre half. And Leo for 7.25 million combined eventually. Uh, we've got him from Napoli. He'd requested to leave the 23 year old Norwegian. And um, I just think again, he's a good young centre half. In the middle, we've still got Yannick. Yannick. Um, now we had quite a few central midfielders and there's not much between them. Um, but I've kind of tried to keep the ones I liked because I wanted to spend more time this year playing with an attacking midfielder, not a defensive midfielder. So I did have too many, um, but I like him. I think he's a good player. Rani is the man. I love this guy. I think he's great. He's not as good as his brother. His brother was a beast, wasn't he, in his day, but he's still a really good player. Andras Schiffer, 24-year-old Hungarian. He's all right. I quite like him. Uh, I like him in Hungarian in my team. But, you know, he's probably one that I might move on eventually. Paul, um, good player. Again, he's one of them that's he's not great. He's only 25, and the fact they can, you know, cover and play where he can is an asset. Signed for just 5 million. This is where you got the Croatia and Serbian leagues on, because you can find good little players, and, you know, my scouts absolutely adored him. He had, like, an A-plus rating. Um, and you look at his ability, he looks like an all-round good young player. He's not, he hasn't got anything shouting out at the minute a 17 or 18 attribute, but I think he's a good player, can play in different positions. He could really improve. But for 5 million, yeah, I couldn't say no. Now his total loan fee is going to be 1.7 million. Loan from Spurs, but this kid, I think can be very good. And I had him on the road to anywhere this year. I signed him at one point on a free, didn't know who he was. It kind of saved his career, he was rotting away. And he just tore it up for me. Um, I think that was in Switzerland. I ended up signing him again somewhere else. I think when I was in Italy, I'm pretty sure. I've definitely had him twice. He's brilliant. So we've still got 22 year old German, Jamie, on the left wing. Could use both feet, could play in multiple positions, great squad player. And of course we signed Reese Nelson again. He was on loan, contract was ended. We've snapped him up. And again, another good player for the squad. Great name this lad, Geraldo Becker. Love him, 28 years old, loads of speed. Good, good player again. But um, I needed another winger, someone who could help. And I like the fact that a lot of my wingers, or all of them, can switch and I can change. Um, and I couldn't really find one. I'd run out of money. <laughs> and then this kid came up, interested on the loan list. As a Man United fan, I had to do it. But this is the midfield that I chose to get rid of. I quite like the other ones, maybe because he was Tunisian. He wasn't happy anyway. Um, so I managed to get his wages off the wage bill and bring him in. Garnaccio, he was a wonder kid. Um, as he had a bit of an upgrade, he was pretty poor when the first game came out, but he's had a pretty decent season. You can see he's got potential in real life. Pace, play on both wings. Yeah, buzzing with this one. So you'll know, Fernino, great player, couldn't loan him back, he's gone. Um, he won the golden boot in some youth international tournament over the summer. Um, the other striker was pretty poor, I sold him on, moved him on. Um, and at first I'm thinking what I'm going to do, couldn't really find anyone. Looked in the Bundesliga 2 and Robert had been the leading goal scorer the last two years. So I was like, fair dues, going for 7 million eventually. And he's good, but I needed someone else. Now I've stayed away from this man for this year because I used him so much last year. I don't think he's as good as he was on FM22, but he's still great, right? I love him. I once signed him at Dortmund to replace Haaland on FM22 and he became better than Haaland. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to do that, but I love this lad. He is a great, great player, great lad to have in your squad. He's got loads of great assets. Yep. The prodigal son has returned home. It's Lorenzo Luca. Yes. Welcome home, son. Lorenzo Luca, 22 years old. Obviously, he's been to a few different teams. He's actually on loan at Ajax. Now, 
it was a conversation I had with Greeno, who signed him for Palermo on his Italian save, and he hadn't played for Ajax. And he got him for like three million quid, right? It cost me more like seven, eight, right? Because he did play for Ajax on my save, and it shows you how different people's saves can be different. On mine, he played 32 times, scored 10 goals, upped his value. Um, but it is what it is. We've signed him. I'm very happy to have him. Six foot seven. It could be a beast. Well, then the bookies have put us up to eight. So the bookies think we're better squad wise than we were last year. But obviously, we're under pressure because we finished in the Champions League spaces last year. We've got to do that again or better. We're in the Champions League. Got extra pressure. Big, big games coming up. But I was really excited. I felt like the squad had something about it. Really did. Um, but could it be consistent? Sometimes. Now, of course, it's the 2nd of September. I'll be getting all the transfers out of the way before I saved it. Um, very busy. A lot of two and throwing. I did quite a bit of business early and players were leaving. And then it's that last bit. You must have done it yourself where you're like, right, get rid of you. Offering them out, please go, please go. And then you're dropping values and everything. It's it's fun, isn't it? But also quite stressful. Because I've done it times when it doesn't work out. But I just felt like I'd just about go over the finish line with the squad this year. Um, but I've played two games so far and won them both on six points but I just wanted to show you the Champions League I'm in a group with Athletic Madrid Benfica and Leon. very very tough group an absolutely bonkers group right uh, and then the Pokal love the Pokal so these are the fixtures and results so far pre-season was okay got beat off Milan and Porto which didn't give me too much hope when we got into Europe I'll be honest with you but then we played Nordhausen in the first round of the Pokal Lorenzo Luca one two three four five goals I know they're a poor team, but Lorenzo Luca, two goals in his Bundesliga debut. Didn't score in that game, but come on, Lukes. We can do this, mate. Well, can we do it? Well, then, if we jump forward to the 13th of January, you'll see we are fourth, but there's a lot in this. I mean, we're, what, <laughs> only a point ahead of Colm, what, six points ahead of Bailey Leverkusen. FC Bain are starting to edge away at the top, but they always do. Um, but there's like that group of us, and it's just close. It's going to stay close. I swear to God, on FM22, it was one of, he's one of them players on FM22, where if you don't play him, he's, you don't, he's okay. But if you played him and stuck with him, he just got better and better and better. And by the time he was like 25, 26, when I had him at Dortmund on Project 23, and other saves, he was scoring 40, 50 goals a season. But um, maybe he's not the same. And I've had 23, I think he has took a little hit, but he's still fantastic. The, he's so big, he's an asset, but he still can score the kind of goals sometimes. So let's look at the results in the league, and there's been some great games and some frustrating games. Uh, we're in a fantastic run, as you can see. Look at that for a game of football. Mad. And then we've, got, we've been beating off Leipzig, we've got beaten off them, beating off Dortmund. We've had a bit of a hit and miss with them. We've either beat them or they beat us. Um, that though that's like winning the Champions League for us beating FC Bayern away now you can see we're through <laughs> we've got to play AC Milan right but it didn't start great so we drew 1-1 I then got beat 3-2 gutted 94th minute I feel like Madrid beat me 2-0 we are bottom of the group right bottom of the group and then I feel like Madrid come we beat them like wow this is ace. Okay, okay, we're getting it together. Draw with Leon. 1-1. One, one. Still, still bottom of the group, but it's a lot closer, this group. A lot tighter. And then this happens, right? Can't, honestly, jumping out of your seat, bonkers crazy, couldn't believe it. Beating Benfica, and I'm thinking, we might have snuck into third. Goal difference. <laughs> so part of me is like, wow, that is absolutely amazing. To spend the whole time at the bottom of the group until the last game of the season and qualifies fantastic right it's great isn't it but then you're also thinking Grr! bloody hell the Europa League is more realistic probably could go far into that but I'm going to take it for what it is because I'm pretty sure now next year the format changes so we might have missed the boat with the Europa League and it's one of them now isn't it when you're growing a club if we ended up in the Europa League now it'd be like a step back because we've got into the Champions League you want to stay there don't you and you want that money but I'm proud of it, man. It was very exciting. To just, that last day was mental. Facing an old team of mine from an old series, Hansa Rostock. Beat them 3-0 in the Pokal. And now I've got Heidenheim in the third round. 
let's have a quick look at the squad. Before we do though, we have sold some players. Uh, Paul Jacquel, um, he left for 3.5 million to Sevilla because he wasn't playing. And of course the right back went as well. Um, so I didn't want to go out and splash loads of money and kind of save it. I thought, let's tap into that loan market. It's always great players that could come to Germany. So we've loaned a few, um, starting with Rocco Simic, who's a striker. I just felt he was available. We could afford him. He's got loads of potential himself. Big lad, um, similar to Lorenzo Luca. So I was like, do you know what? Why not have a third striker? Why not give myself more options for the final push of the season? So I'm happy with that one. Uh, Ivan Illich, good little player. And um, we've loaned him from West Ham. I think he's decent, the 22 year old. Why not? Um, and then we've loaned a right back, Timothy Pembele <laughs> from Paris Saint Germain, right back. He can play at centre half as well. So, yeah, that was all the business in January. Quick look at the squad, and they've done all right. And this, I haven't just stuck with my attacking midfielder tactic. I have switched up a bit, especially in massive games away from home, and it's worked sometimes. Sometimes it hasn't. It's football, isn't it? Um, but the lads have been good and there's some really good players and there's obviously players who want to play more. These players are like to move on. But I think we're in a good spot. I think, you know, we spent even more money. We do the training facilities twice this year. Um, but I think if we can get back in or stay in that Champions League place, get that money again coming in and move a few on, I could really transform this team even more, hopefully, going into the third season. But... Yeah, Garnacho's been great. He had an injury recently. Mohamed, great little player. Great to have around the squad. Um, I love both of them to be permanent deals. Probably not going to happen. But, I mean, I can't lie. <laughs> You've got a good little team. I feel like we've got a great defence. It's really good. I mean, that Ortega's an okay goalie. He's okay. Um, he won't, didn't cost me a lot of money, did he? Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've really enjoyed it. But it's the 18th of May, and we've got one more game left to play. Yes, indeed. <laughs> against Wolfsburg, who are in third, also on 71 points, and so are Leipzig, they're on 71 points. Their goal difference is better, so we're hoping for, you know, other games to go our way. We beat Wolfsburg. If Leipzig drop points and get beat, we could end up second, which is fantastic, and I love that. We're miles away from Dortmund. Dortmund have been shit this... I think they've not been great last year. They've not been great this year. They beat us, obviously, earlier in the season. But I don't know why. They usually have good money, good players, why are they so far behind us? I don't know. I mean, we've lost six, drawn five, won 22. Uh, Lorenzo Luca, though, have you noticed? The golden boy, my son, the legend of football manager, is the leading goal scorer in the Bundesliga. I knew he'd do well still. I didn't know he'd be that good. But what a player, he's cheap, man. Try some Lorenzo out for yourself. So if you look at the second half of the season in the Bundesliga, look at that run in the new year. It was absolutely brilliant. Win after win after win after win after win after. Ah, oh, came out of nowhere, hurt a lot, suffered there, gutted, and then went on a great run again. Look, beating Dortmund. We've played them four times so far. They've beat me twice. We've beat them twice. Very exciting, and we've been on a good run here. Look, look at that. Right? Do you remember earlier in the season we beat them four-two, and then you go to the end. We beat them 4-3. That is the best achievement on this series so far. I think it really, really is. They are better than us by country mile, but the boys have just done so well. In the Champions League, we only got to the quarterfinals, but what a way to get there. We've got Milan, great team, beat them 3-2. Then we got beat 3-2, <laughs> won on penalties. Bit stressful. Uh, and then we've got Man City. We've got tons of money on the game. Er you know, Erling Haaland. Blah, blah, blah. They give us a kick in twice, but we got to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. What about the pole, Cal? Hey, look at this. Uh, we beat Heidenheim. Obviously, it got a little bit stressy. As you can see, we scored late. Then they scored very late, and then we did them over in extra time. Uh, then we got Stuttgart, beat them 2-1. Very happy. Look at Garaccio. Uh, Bushy Munch and Gladbach give them a kick in. Lorenzo Luca getting two goals. It's just it just worked for us in this cup competition. Fantastic stuff. And now we've got Dortmund. So this is gonna be the live comp. We're gonna jump in at the end of the Wolfsburg game and see what happens and then go straight to this because this is massive, man. So we're going into the final minutes of this game, and what a game. The first half we tore him to shreds. So Lorenzo Luca hat trick. I've brought him off now to save him for the final, rest him a bit. Um but you might notice then if you quickly saw the league, uh, last time I saw Leipzig were beating Erfurt Berlin, so we needed our arch rival 
to do us a favour and they've not really been able to do that. But I think third's still respectable. Buzzing for Luca. That first half, man, scoring in the first minute. It's like <laughs> brilliant. They scored again dead quick. Second half though, they have really come back into it, I'll be honest with you. But I've made a lot of changes, resting players. Um Oh guys, I was not paying attention, I was wondering what's happening. Um so they kind of come back into it. We obviously scored a goal, but I can't see them getting fully back into it. Well over injury time here. Very happy. Very happy with especially that first half. We need to play like that in the pole cal final. 75 million we just got. Hey, we could be in a really good spot here next summer. You can really start to do some serious business with this team. So we did finish third. Level on points with Leipzig. They've just got better goal difference. Buzzing with him. Hertha Berlin. Only 1 0 that game. Lorenzo Luca, best player in the league. He shocked me. I know I love him a bit. I didn't think he'd be this good. I didn't. I just love the kid and I wanted to give him a chance. I wanted to try him out. Leading goal scorer, but nine goals. Best player in the league. So it's cup final day. And uh, our board expects us to get beat. And uh, our fans expect us to get beat. It's like the world is against us. Even though we've been far better than them in the league. They've beat us, we've beat them, but we've been better over the course of a season, but this is a one-off game. Anything, anything could happen. Quick and final look at the squad arranged by average rating. You can see the boys have been doing the business. That Ivan Illich came in and was just great for me. Back end of the season. Great little pickup. And you can just see the names there. I mean, they've been good. They've, they've been a bit shit at times, of course, when we got annihilated off Leipzig, but I think we did. We were respectable in the Champions League. We fought and we battled and we did really well. Um, of course, we're in a cup final. We're third in the league. And we've got a ton of money. And there's only more money going to come in. And I just can't wait now to maybe sell a few little players and get to work a bit more. Welcome to the Olympia Stadion, our arch rival stadium in Berlin. Hopefully, being in Berlin now will be some kind of advantage for us. Put a good team out there. We, did, we can do what we did against Wolfsburg, who are technically a better team than Dortmund. We'll be okay, but they've still got fantastic players and a very dangerous team. But again, it's a cup final. Come on! So here we go. Dortmund kick off. I mean, this could be great for us. It'd, it's great to pick up trophies. It'd be a great thing to win for this club to start building the foundations to hopefully kick us on. I mean, you just don't know, dear. Do you? you don't know. I mean, if we lose it, I'm still really proud of the season because there's still work to do. And I think I can see what we can be and what we can do. Thank you for coming back for episode two. Again, I don't know how long this will go on for. Even if I win this, I said I wanted to win of a trophy. I, I want to do a, maybe another couple. We'll see how it goes. I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Um, go on, Becca. Go on. I'm trying to find Luca. Come on, put that pressure on. We started quite well here, haven't we? Can Dortmund handle us? I don't think they can. Garnaccio. 1-0. <gasps> one nil. No, it's not 1-0. Referee don't like me. Let's just keep putting that pressure on though. We've started well. Let's do it. Come on. We can do it. Um, but yeah, it's quite early on Sunday. I promised this video would be out. Last night, kids went to bed. Me and the missus like, should we just have a drink or two? And then during that turned into too many. I am rough. I feel like I've got massive heavy weights on my eyelids. I'm not going to lie. But um, oh, 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 he's a good little player in it. He's a good little player. But I had to get it done. My wife woke me up with a coffee saying, aren't you filming? I was like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. God, it's a busy day. It's Easter Sunday. Got to do an Easter egg hunt. Got to go to my mum's for a good few hours. And we've got to go to my mother-in-law's. And Lorenzo Luca. Right, here we go. Here we go. Ha, bear, bear. Good players, man. But I'm very excited to see who I can bring in. I want to find some ones. Don't know Lorenzo Luca. Lorenzo Luca. Lorenzo Bloody Luca. So it's half time. We've been good. They've been pretty good. But a goal disallowed as well. 1 0 is never enough, let's be honest. But whoo -hoo. Let's go. Second half is underway. Very excited. Very, very excited. I, I love the trophy, but I love the cup. I love the league, to be fair. I do like some German football. And then, um, I'll be honest with you, until I started doing the rebuild, the old rebuild series and the journey, man. I mentioned this before, I just used to spend too much time in England, me. I used to dip my toe in abroad, start a save, get bored. Doing the road to anywhere and the, and the rebuilds really opened my eyes to different leagues, especially like I like Germany, Italy, Argentina, places like that. And oh my God, why is it gone jittery? I don't, I don't care. It's been a bit funny this morning, like me. Oh, here he is, the big man in midfield. P. 
pinging it forward to Becker. Becker cuts it across. Oh my god. I mean, Dortmund, man. What is what is wrong with them on this series? Good, but they're just not. They're not as good as they should be. I mean, I think we've come good at the end of the year. It's going out of the Champions League, but in the league, we got really good towards the end. And then and beating Wolfsburg like we did was fantastic. That's what made give us a bit of confidence for this. Because no one thought we could do it. I, I knew we could do it because it's 50-50 versus Dortmund and we're so far ahead of him in the league, points-wise. Why couldn't we do it? That kid, though, I would buy him in a heartbeat. This Illich guy that's loaned in. Oh, oh my God. This is so perfect. A Lorenzo Luca hat-trick in a Pokal final. Now, some of these young players I've brought in this year, actually, I've got minimum fees. I'm going to try and get rid of them over the summer. Lorenzo Luca hasn't. Thank God. Reese Nelson's come on for the last 18 minutes for Garnaccio. Um, I'd, look, I'd love these lads on loan. Especially Ivan and um, Garnaccio, but we're never going to get him. Maybe. Maybe one day. Not Garnaccio, though. He's a wonder kid, isn't he? United are going to do the usual, aren't they, this season? No, we want to use him in the first team. Thank you for playing him and turning him into a good player. Um, but we're going to keep him. Yeah. The computer is a bit jittery today. I don't know why. I have no idea. It shouldn't be. I really do think it's it's sympathising with me because I might look beautiful and handsome this morning. I don't. I feel like death. I feel like death. I swear to God. I need a fry up, but I'm on a diet. You know, I've lost two stone since Christmas. It was 18 and a half stone. Right? I did a podcast. Some of you may have watched it called the Off the Beat podcast with Lee Monaghan. And I was massive. And it's the first time I'd really looked at myself and thought, go on, Becca. Oh, my God. Wrap this shit up. So, yeah, I'm now 16 and a half stone. I am six foot three, but I, I want to lose another stone. But I'm on, I'm on the right path. I'm eating really well. Feel really good. No takeouts. I've only drank one pint in the last month until last night. That's probably why I got drunk. <laughs> I didn't drink loads either last night. Like, normally, the amount I drank last night, I'd be all right. But I was like, oh, my God. Um, but anyway, there we go. <laughs> Pokal champions, I will be having some champers with the boys. This is brilliant, man. You can't lie, this is like a great achievement. It's, me, it's a cup of love, tournament of love. It's the first major trophy for this club, so I feel like I'm doing it right. I'm building this club right. So, of course, we were in the Champions League, so let's see who won it. And Arsenal won it. They beat FC Bayern 2 0. So, fair play to Arsenal, beating the great Germans. Bayern, hopefully, it's them on the slide. Um, Real Madrid beat City last year but we've just spent a ton of money i didn't ask them to but it was sitting in the bank and they thought oh let's do it they're going to be adding eleven thousand seats when the capacity up to thirty-three thousand. so hopefully that's extra seats but we still keep all our standing but it won't be completed till august 2025 which means we're gonna have to rent a stadium for a year in cottbus it's a team in the third division a similar size uh, stadium to ours, 50%. It looks like it's standing. It's, 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 some, it's some distance. It's like South Berlin. It'd be like a bit of a mission to get to games. So there we go. That is the end of episode two, season two. As always, thanks for joining me. If you haven't subscribed yet, go on. Do me a favour. I know you want to. It's dead easy. Just press the button. Thank you very much. Make sure you all hit that bell. You won't miss episode three or any of my future videos. I do have plans for future videos when I get round to it. I promise you stories and a few more databases like the Ted Lasso one. I've got two that I want to make before the end of FM23 to give you something different to play. But uh, most of all, thank you for your view. It really means the world to me. And thank you to my patrons, you guys who have stuck with me on Patreon. Um, all the equipment I use uh, costs money, all the editing stuff. And you guys help with that. And I don't think I could justify it without you. And I probably have to quit. So you really do. Honestly, your support is massive. So thank you. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great Easter weekend. I'm going to have a coffee and lie down for a bit before I even try and edit this episode. Because <laughs> honestly, I am dying on my ass. I'll be honest with you. Anyway, you stay happy. You stay safe. And hopefully, hopefully I'll see your beautiful little face for season three, episode three. Pokal champs. <laughs>